Well, uh, this is ninth lecture uh, in the series of mechanics of metal forming. We are going to cover the state of stresses topic here uh, and related issues including problems. Basically, this topic may continue uh, up to two lectures or three lectures, something like that. We are concerned uh, so far uh, the tensor part, ten tensor representation of uh, a scalar quantity, a vector quantity or a tensor has already been explained how it is it can be represented in a very compact manner. Now, uh, the major topic which concern mechanics part of metal forming uh, is stresses. As you know, stresses so far whatever we have studied stress is a uh, vector quantity, but stress in fact it has uh, more than two dimension and uh, it has more than uh, six component. So, let us see uh, this very important topic. So, uh, stress at a point, what do we mean by stress at a point? Let us the, uh, take this particular figure number 1, where you have a say uh, if you take an elementary force which is acting on uh, an area, a small very small area, let, let the area be delta A uh, of a given body, basically a solid body and uh, let this elementary force be delta F be represented. So, the stress, how do we define stress? So, stress acting on this elementary is infinitesimal area delta A in the direction of the force delta F can be defined as limit when delta A tends to 0. That means, that this area is infinitesimally small, very small. Then it is defined that within this is infinitesimal area delta A tending to 0 it is defined as delta F by delta A. So, now if you resolve this delta force which delta F force which is in three dimensional space anywhere, if it is resolved in three basic directions which is uh, perpendicular to the three major per, uh, axes if it is take, taken as x, y, z. So, if it is resolved in the direction of x as delta f x, in direction of y as delta f y and in direction of f z as a de, a delta uh, f delta z. So, um, one can say that these uh, directions of the component of the force delta f along uh, o a o, uh, o x o y and o z directions. Uh, in, uh, which is in the plane of delta A. Now, if the force component along these directions are taken as say as I told uh, delta F x, delta F y, delta F z. So, uh, the stresses corresponding to these directions can be written as uh, that is the sigma x x is equal to limit 
delta a tends to 0, so that would be in direction delta f x delta uh, delta a. Similarly, we can write down it for uh, uh, sigma x y and sigma z x. So, we can write it. it uh, here, uh, we are using delta x x delta y y or delta x y, it is double subscript. As you recall, uh, uh, you can use it for resolving or uh, identifying the stresses directions, where the first script indicates the direction normal to the plane on which the stress uh, is acting, while the second script identifies the uh, directions in which the stress is acting. So, uh, if we take uh, sigma x x, that means the stress on the plane which is perpendicular to O x and which is acting parallel to the axis O x. Similarly, uh, sigma x y would mean that the stress which is acting on the plane normal to the O x and which is acting parallel to the uh, O y axis. So, uh, this way we can uh, find out uh, the different order of stresses uh, at a given point and then uh, it becomes necessary to specify the stresses at the given point on three mutually perpendicular planes which is uh, which are taken parallel to x, y and z axis. So, these stresses can act uh, and um, it can be specified uh, in the double suffix manner like your uh, uh, sigma x x, sigma y y, sigma z z and in the direction normal to the uh, stresses like sigma x y, sigma y x, sigma y z, sigma x, uh, x z, then sigma z x likewise and the, the shear stresses. Uh, uh, sometimes the second suffix uh, of the normal list is uh, we can delete later uh, and instead of writing say uh, sigma x x we can uh, which is equal to sigma y y or sigma z z they can also be represented in various represented like sigma x sigma y sigma z only this is for uh, easiness so so far if we look at the tensorial notation these nine components that is uh, x x y y z z and the x y y x and corresponding like that these nine components uh, could be simply designated by a uh, a one uh, uh, representation like sigma i j as we represented uh, in the tensorial notation and say the three uh, specified directions can be uh, subscripted at i and j. So, i can take place 1, 2, 3 and similarly j can take the values as 1, 2, 3 and so these stresses are called as a tensor. So, at a point if it is denoted the array of these stresses it, then it can be denoted, denoted as uh, your uh, like uh, sigma i j is equal to an array in the form of matrix. So, that becomes your uh, sigma x x, sigma x y, sigma uh, x z, then sigma y x, sigma y y and sigma y z and similar, similarly the sigma z x, sigma z y and sigma z z. So, uh, now, we can see that we are defining the coordinate in terms of x, y, z and uh, we, you can also define these stresses in cylindrical coordinate system that is r theta z uh, one can define or like this one 1, 2, 3 notation can also be given like when i is equal to j the normal stresses can be uh, like sigma x x, sigma y y, sigma z z and when i and j is not equal to, so that comes uh, to corresponding to the shear stresses as 
sigma x y sigma y z sigma uh, uh, z y sigma uh, z x sigma x z and all those things. So, these complementary shear stresses uh, uh, like uh, sigma x y is equal to sigma y z and similarly uh, stresses like uh, sigma y z and sigma z y are similar, it is a complementary to each other and therefore, it can be simply written as uh, that the sigma i j is equal to sigma j i. So, to indicate uh, these stresses in a tensor here form as a symmetric. So, these are called as the symmetric tensors. Uh, thus, instead of 9 component, these stresses can be uh, represented only which is are which are also independent in uh, six component. So, this is what the stress tensor basically at a point is defined uh, in nine component or important one is six component. So, let us see in this figure which uh, shows the stress uh, how do you call uh, our uh, 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 the graphically one can draw the, the stress circle uh, which is acting on a body. So, let us take this uh, representation like where uh, particularly let us take the plane stress case where now let us take this figure number 2 where we have uh, this particular uh, one the, the so you can see here the sigma uh, if you are taking as the plane stress means x direction and y direction, j direction is not shown. So, the form of a circle which has uh, come to be known as the stress circle, this will form the basis and that is very popularly known as the Mohr circle. So, consider a state of the stress having uh, sigma x, sigma y and uh, sigma x y as the shear stress. Uh, under the condition when sigma z uh, and sigma y z and sigma z x are 0, because it is a plane stress. So, this representation of uh, two dimensional stress field can now be shown it on the x y plane. Now, if you rotate this uh, uh, x y axis by say an angle theta and that change axis then becomes the x dash y dash and now if we resolve the forces along the new axis that is x dash y dash. So, this will give you uh, the sigma x prime is equal to as the resolution one can see sigma x cos square theta plus sigma y sin square theta plus twice sigma x y sin theta cos theta and similarly the, the sigma y prime in the new change coordinate direction sigma x sin square theta plus sigma y cos square theta minus twice sigma x y sin theta cos theta. So, uh, and then the shear component in the change uh, um, coordinate that can be written as sigma x prime y prime is equal to minus in the bracket sigma uh, x minus sigma y and sin theta cos theta plus uh, sigma x y cos square theta minus sin square theta. Now, if you simply you simplify these three equations that is corresponding to sigma x prime, sigma y prime and sigma x prime y prime and uh, you if you if you use the simple trigonometry relationship, we can arrange these equations in this form which is the equation number 2. So, one can see here and uh, in case uh, if sigma x rep is represented by say sigma 1 and sigma y is represented by sigma 2 uh, as the principal stresses and say the sigma x y that is the shear stress is 0, then the same equation number 2 can be simplified as sigma x prime is equal to half of sigma 1 plus sigma 2 plus half of the sigma 1 minus sigma 2 cos 2 theta and similarly the y component on the 
change one can see one can show it in this manner equation number 3. Now, let us see this figure this more circle uh, for the plane stress can be now written as where the x corresponds to the direct axis and y axis corresponds to the shear stress. So, now you if you plot it see the center C of the circle becomes your sigma x and similarly uh, corresponding to this one one can draw it here. So, at a point theta if the, the stress at a point which is theta degree to to the, the direct stress um, uh, plane. So, one can represent it, it in this fashion. So, both the stresses on x y plane and the when the plane is rotated by theta degree. So, it is also shown here in this figure which is corresponding to delta x prime and delta y prime one can see. So, here you see the uh, the stress x prime y prime which is given by minus 1 by 2 sigma 1 minus sigma 2 sin 2 theta. And if we square and add this term uh, from the equation 1, it will give you this particular equation which is uh, uh, sigma x prime minus half of the sigma x plus sigma y uh, square plus sigma x prime y prime square and it equals to this one the right hand side which is given here. So, one can note this one uh, on this side here it is and uh, it is a direct form of the stress on one of the, um, the previous plane and when it is rotated it is equaling here. So, this equation of um, circle which is a uh, circle with normal stress and shear stress uh, it is on the coordinate axis. So, the coordinate axis of center is if you identify from here it becomes as 1 by 2 sigma x sigma y and 0 and its radius would be half of sigma x minus sigma y v square plus sigma x y square and under root 2 half whole thing. So, in order to consider the circle let us locate. So, how this is being one can see you can locate the sigma x and sigma y along the normal axis uh, and locate the uh, the center at this one which you can take it and and cut it along the axis. So, you can identify the center at half of sigma x plus sigma y as in this which is shown. So, if the clockwise shear is taken as positive and uh, uh, anti clockwise is taken as negative then sigma x y on x axis would be taken as positive shear and uh, it can be plotted as minus sigma x y along the shear. Uh, axis uh, from the point uh, representing the sigma x. So, uh, similarly one can also um, uh, 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 sigma x y and along the y uh, plane would be negative and therefore, one can plot like this. So, to find the stresses on any plane which is inclined at an angle theta to the plane on which sigma x is normal. Uh, you can set off an angle 2 theta from the uh, the c x plane to the to the the, the plane which is located as uh, capital x prime and y prime on the circle to get the sigma x prime sigma y prime and similarly the shear part of the x prime uh, on this change axis by equation number 2 you can utilize since the principal stress uh, are direct the stresses on the planes across which the shearing stress are 0. Therefore, one can say that the sigma 1 is O A which is half of the sigma x plus sigma y plus in bracket the sigma x minus sigma y by 2 whole square plus sigma x y whole square under root all of these component. So, this is what uh, one can find out from the Mohr circle. Now, let us see this particular figure number 4, where uh, we can take a uh, like this 3 axis, we can take it like here and if we take a plane which is from the this center, we, if we take a plane which cuts 3 axis as uh, 
uh, the, the, the direct stress sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3 axis at a point O on this. So, let us see uh, on a this particular oblique plane which cuts at point A capital B and capital C uh, along the three axis. So, sigma 2 now it is normal. So, from this the plane it is normal here at the point O say on the. Uh, so, the sigma 2 can be written as uh, if you see here it can be written as O B that is the O B and uh, so, it can be written as half of sigma x plus sigma y plus the whole thing in bracket sigma x minus sigma y by 2 whole square plus the, the shear component on this x y plane that is the sigma x y square and root of this. So, this equation number fifth uh, the maximum shear stress can be now found out as minus from the um, uh, one can see from the Mohr circle diagram itself, it, it, the maximum shear stress comes out to be uh, your uh, half of sigma 1 minus sigma 2 or um, it can also be written as uh, the other form which is including the sigma x minus sigma 2 is square plus shear and under root. So, this stress circle can be drawn as you have seen. Uh, easily uh, either with principal stress or the direct stress uh, and shear stress as known on the plane. Uh, and uh, uh, the stress on any plane which is inclined to uh, at an angle can be evaluated from the stress circle without going through the solution of the equilibrium equations and all that. So, for plane stress of two dimensional coordinate have been considered uh, and similarly one can also draw for the three dimensional uh, stress when it is more frequently encountered. So, let us consider the situation where it is three dimensional. So, you have the stresses acting on the uh, body as sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3 as shown in previously in figure number 4. So, one can arbitrarily select this particular plane A B C as 1. So, and the, let the, the normal stress be S n represented as capital S n. So, resultant of the shear stress can be uh, uh, shown at shear that is capital S S. So, if the, uh, if the direction cosine on the that O n if you look here O n. Uh, uh, it represents uh, on normal to the plane A B C. So, if these directions cosines are let us take as uh, L M N. So, the component of the stresses sig that is S 1, S 2 and S 3 uh, in three dimensional space along 1, 2, 3 directions can be simply as S 1 as L sigma 1, S 2 as L sigma 2 and S 3 as N uh, sigma 3. Then one can write down that is this normal stress is equal to L S 1 plus M S 2 plus N S 3 which is the in the form of direction cosines and it can also be represented as L square sigma 1 plus M square sigma 2 plus n square sigma 3 and therefore, uh, the stress the shear stress uh, S s square becomes equal to uh, S 1 square plus S 2 square plus S 3 square minus S n square uh, and then it can further be written as uh, if we transpose the S n square to the left hand side. So, it is S n square plus S s square becomes equal to L square sigma 1 square plus M square sigma 2 square plus N square sigma 3. And also as we know that uh, the direction cosines sum of the direction cosines is square uh, is equal to 1. So, if we 
substitute the equation 7 8 and uh, uh, and in 9 this gives the value of l square m square and n square so for an example l square is uh, in the numerator um, which is equal to in the numerator side as a uh, ss square plus uh, two bracket multiplication of two brackets as number one bracket as sn minus a sigma 2 and second bracket as sigma n minus sigma 3 and on the denominator side the multiplication of two brackets that is sigma 1 minus sigma 2 and sigma 1 minus sigma 3 and likewise m square and n square is can be calculated and this is what has been given in equation number 10 so therefore uh, one can then write down that sn minus sigma 2 multiplied by sn minus sigma 3 plus ss square and that becomes equal to l square sigma 1 minus sigma 2 multiplied by sigma 1 minus sigma 3 r sigma n minus sigma 2 plus sigma 3 by 2 whole square plus ss square and that is equal to l square multiplied by sigma 1 minus sigma 2 multiplied by sigma 1 minus sigma 3 plus sigma 2 minus sigma 3 by 2 and whole square that is what is the equation number 11 the above equation is specifies a circle and uh, having center as sn and uh, ss uh, the plane with the center, uh, uh, the circle on the plane SN and uh, SS, sorry, uh, that is the plane is SN and SS, and the center of the circle is located at sigma 2 plus sigma 3 by 2 and 0. So, similarly, one can also write down. Uh, for the the other component that is sigma 3 and sigma 1 and sigma 1 and sigma 2 so the uh, equation similar to equation number 11 can be written as equation 12 and equation 13 which has been shown here uh, please note that uh, these equations uh, are specifying a circle in different planes. For an example, if you see the equation 12, it defines a circle whose center is located at sigma 3 plus sigma 2, uh, sigma 1 by 2, comma 0, and the center of the circle represent, uh, is represented by equation 13, having the center as sigma 1 plus sigma 2 by 2 and 0. So, the radii of the circle uh, which is defined by equation 11, 12 and 13 are therefore, it can be written as uh, in bracket having two major components that is your L square sigma 1 minus sigma 2 multiplied by sigma 1 minus sigma 3 plus sigma 2 minus sigma 3 by 2 whole square and this is all this in a under root so uh, if you look at this figure 6 where the static equilibrium on an infinitesimal tetrahedron is shown and uh, if you locate the center uh, uh, and uh, if it is uh, the points are identified as C1, C2 and C3 here so uh, it is therefore clear from equation 14 to four, uh, equation 16 uh, that um, the admissible values of 
uh, normal stress that is SN and SS the shear part must lie in the shaded area which is bounded by the circles as shown so these points are to be noted very clearly and uh, uh, the second thing is to be noted is uh, um, that is stress invariant so let us see what is stress invariance uh, let us consider the sixth component of stress at a point in XYZ coordinate system uh, that has been shown here in figure uh, 6 uh, where the, the equilibrium of the infinitesimal tetrahedron is taken up so uh, the stresses that is acting on this point can be evaluated by considering the static equilibrium of an infinitesimal tetrahedron formed by the plane ABC and the three coordinate planes that is AOB, BOC and AOC uh, are there. Let uh, delta be the area of triangle ABC whose normal uh, has direction cosines as LMN. The area of the these coordinate planes that is AOB, BOC and AOC are therefore delta L, delta M and delta N respectively. And let capital S be the resultant stress on capital A, capital B, C this particular element uh, with normal that is the direct stress and shear stress component as SN and SS and the components of the stresses uh, having SX, XY and SZ along XYZ uh, directions and mm, this has been shown uh, in figure 7 again so the equilibrium of the forces on the tetrahedron OABC in x direction can be written as that means delta SX and that is equal to what the component sum of the three components that is delta L sigma X plus delta M sigma YX plus delta N sigma XZ look at this figure carefully uh, 7 where uh, the, the components has been shown resolved along with the normal and shear component as well so these component becomes as SX and that is equal to L sigma X plus M sigma YZ plus N sigma XZ SY becomes equal to L sigma XY uh, plus M sigma Y plus N sigma ZY and SZ becomes equal to L sigma XX plus M sigma YZ plus N sigma Z. The normal stress that is uh, SN on plane ABC can be therefore evaluated by projecting SX, XY and SZ on uh, ON thus one can write this in as given here in equation 20 that means the normal stress becomes SN is becomes L SX plus M SY plus N S uh, Y as the components uh, sorry SZ as the component and uh, if we substitute the value of SX, SY and SZ uh, uh, in equation the earlier equation that is uh, that is equation uh, where the 
then this becomes equal to the uh, Sn uh, is equal to L plus summation of the T term corresponding to X direction that is L sigma X plus M sigma Y X plus N sigma Z X plus M multiplied by the summation of the term like L sigma X Y plus M sigma Y plus N sigma Z Y plus N multiplied by the terms three term summation that is L sigma X Y plus M sigma Y Z plus N sigma Z R simply it can be written then that is S N becomes L square sigma x plus m square sigma y plus n square sigma z plus two times of the uh, if we get if you put so that becomes l m sigma x y plus m n sigma y z plus n l sigma x y and this is what has been shown here in equation 21 the shear stress that is s s can be then simply evaluated as um, SS square which is equal to total uh, total stress square minus a normal stress square or simply it can be written as uh, or we can simply say that the shear stress component is equal to the summation of the X uh, shear uh, stress total is at uh, x square plus y square and minus r. So, these equations 17 to 22 uh, be used to get this is on defined plane when the state of stress at a point is known. So, corresponding to the L M N as and uh, one can represent it as L 1, L 2, L 3 and then one can write in the sorry notation 20 equation number 22 very simple form uh, total is j j j and e 1 2 3 so uh, l i and sigma i j so this equation number is the tensorial notation stress and uh, let us take to the case and resolve the stress in the normal uh, to the plane a y z and therefore the one can see the total stress normal and uh, and shear stress is zero suppose on to the plane a b c if you take so, the principal plane uh, with normal direction as a principal direction with uh, where the total stress is equal to normal stress as the principal stress. So, the direction uh, cosine of total stress can be written as that is S capital S x as L s pi component is m s and z as this one. So, equation 17, 18 and 19 can now give set of three equations as which has been shown in equation 25 that means L sigma x minus capital S plus M sigma y x plus N sigma uh, z uh, x z is equal to 0 and L sigma x y plus m sigma y minus s plus n sigma z y is equal to 0 and L sigma x z plus m sigma y z plus n sigma z minus capital S and that is what is equal to 0 again if we replace l m n by <coughs> that is l1 l2 and l3 so this equation uh, 25 can be further written in the tensorial form tensorial notation as li multiplied by sigma ij minus delta ij that is chronicle delta ij capital S and that is what is equal to 0. So, uh, as you know the, the chronicle delta ij uh, 
becomes equal to 1 when i and j is equal and it becomes equal to 0 when i and j is not equal. That means the equation 25 uh, to have a non-trivial solution for the uh, direction cosines L M N, the determinant of the coefficient must be 0 and that means uh, the determinant this particular determinant which is shown uh, by equation 27 is equal to 0 these 9 component uh, the diagonal component I can tell so the diagonal components of the this determinant is sigma x minus capital S sigma y minus capital S sigma z minus capital z and other components are as the stress components are there so expanding the determinant and uh, rearranging the terms we get a equation which has got uh, uh, the cubic terms of the total stress a square term and the term containing capital S and constant term that means there are four major terms so that means the equation becomes as s cube minus uh, sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z and capital S square minus sigma xy square plus sigma yz square plus sigma zx square minus sigma x sigma y minus sigma y sigma z minus sigma z sigma uh, x and multiplied by capital S and minus of the constant uh, uh, the other term that is having uh, six more term like sigma x sigma y sigma z plus twice sigma x y sigma y z sigma z x minus sigma x sigma y x square y z square minus sigma y sigma z x square minus sigma z sigma x y square and that is what these summations is equal to zero so this is a equation and uh, the same can also be written as uh, what has been shown here in equation 28 and that is simply a s cube minus i1 s square minus i2 s minus i3 is equal to 0 and where you are aware that i1 i2 and i3 are the invariants so the i1 as you if you recall back is equal to sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z i2 is sigma square xy plus uh, sigma square y uh, sigma yz square plus sigma zx square minus sigma x sigma y plus sigma y sigma z plus sigma uh, uh, x sigma x sigma z sigma x and i3 becomes your sigma x sigma y sigma z plus two times of the sigma x y sigma y z sigma z x minus sigma x sigma y z square plus sigma y sigma z x square plus sigma z sigma x y square so this equation 28 has uh, three real roots as you can see the equation is in third order cubic equation so therefore it has a three real roots which are the principal stresses uh, sigma 1 sigma 2 and sigma 3 corresponding to uh, this stress system i1 i2 i3s are called the invariants as the first second and third invariants of the stress tensor these are uh, in fact non varying quantities since they are independent of the direction of the axis chosen uh, suppose instead of x y z the axis is taken as x star y star and z star then the equation 28 uh, in terms of i1 i2 and i3 will have to be 
defined in terms of that means sigma x star sigma y star sigma z square and sigma x y star etc and the stress invariance corresponding to the new set of the axis can be then evaluated which has been shown here in equation 29 you please note that now the i1 i2 and i3 uh, as given above is replaced by the star terms and the the uh, the i3 is to be noted so so i3 becomes equal to sigma x uh, star sigma y star sigma z square minus 2 times sigma x y star sigma y z star sigma z x star minus sigma x star sigma y z square star plus sigma y star sigma z uh, x star square plus sigma z star sigma x y star square so uh, if the three principal stress directions are chosen as the coordinate axis then the these invariants uh, will become as i1 which is equal to i1 plus i2 plus i3 i2 becomes equal to minus sigma 1 sigma 2 plus sigma 2 sigma 3 plus sigma 3 sigma 1 and i3 becomes equal to sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 because shear stresses are 0 thus the invariants uh, being uh, three independent quantities and uh, can be evaluated uh, if sigma x sigma y sigma z sigma x y etc are sigma star sigma y star sigma z star sigma x y star etc are uh, sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 are known alternatively sigma 1 sigma 2 sigma 3 can also be evaluated if l1 l2 l3 is are known so in tensor notation these invariants can be very sim can be simplified and can be written what has been shown here in equation 31 32 and 33 that means sigma 1 is equal to sigma ii that is the tensor sigma 2 is equal to 1 by 2 sigma ij sigma ij and invariant i3 is 1 by 3 sigma uh, ij sigma jk sigma ki so this is what has been uh, the portion uh, related to the stress state of the stress and uh, the situations when the uh, we come across to change of the axis all these things has been covered and hopefully you will uh, revise these things so that we can meet again in the next lecture that is lecture 10 so thank you thank you very much